when you look at those piers with the, the cement all peeling off and the rusted rebar underneath. One has to worry about that if you're in an automobile driving on top of it. I have a degree in botany. I'm a botanist. Most of what I studied in school and then in, in various jobs afterwards was terrestrial uh, ecology and plant succession. And that's, that, those were my interest. And that was off and on and on again. In between, I would do some woodworking. And somehow, I started doing woodworking and I never went back to botany or the biological sciences, I should say. I started painting furniture. I wanted to make functional art, stuff that you would use, and I moved on from there to painting on wood. And then I continued to work with wood, and you know, one thing led to another, and I started working on canvases. All of a sudden, you could go out and buy a canvas, and there you had your blank slate and then you could do the artwork. And it was a whole new world to me when I discovered that. I was born in Providence. I went to a bunch of different schools. I took a bunch of art courses, and I always did really well in the classes. When I was in fifth grade, and I was going to Moses Brown School, there was a coil pot on the top shelf, and I was set on making a bigger coil pot. And this was the result of it. It has my initials and then it has 5A. This was one of my first big art projects. And so I've kept it all these years, but it never really occurred to me to go to art school. I was living in the valley section of Providence and they were starting to tear the buildings down and there were empty buildings around. Just for, for fun, we'd go and we'd go to these old buildings the first one was the Providence Cold Storage. On top of the Providence Cold Storage building, there was, um, there was a sign. Someone went to the trouble of making each letter, and it said, Providence Cold Storage. And one day I went up there, and we were just exploring. Then I went home that night, and I realized that I just had to have the letters to paint. I got some friends together, and I took the Providence. And what I did is I went around and took photographs of the different architectural details, these little nuances, the shadows, the masonry work, and that's what I painted on each letter. I developed a passion for the old buildings. It was something that fascinated me, the old architecture, the 12-foot ceilings, the big windows, and that was the beginning of how I developed to become a painter. I had been dabbling with doing little paintings, nothing, nothing fancy. The letters, that was the bridge that took me from painting on wood to painting on canvases. And from then I said, well, I want to kind of do a series of paintings that capture the building as a whole. In reality, it just sort of happened. There wasn't a lot of thought put into, well, this is what I'm going to do next. These buildings were, well, we watched a few of them get torn down. More were getting torn down every year. And that's where I started looking at it as a way of documenting it. It's more than drawing a flower, you know, before it dies. It's, it's not that kind of documentation. It's a very selfish thing because I want to capture that for myself. Once I painted the building, there was a finality to, to it. It was a way of coming to terms with the fact that they were being destroyed. I could let the building go. And plus it was, it was enjoyable to paint because it meant going out and, and doing drawings and exploring. That's how I like to work, as I like to go out and, and, and draw. I'll take my sketchbook, my pens, and I'll go out and I'll go for a walk. I'll just start walking around and I'll sit down and I'll see something that I want to draw. I'll see a line, I'll see a shadow, you know, a window. And that's where it starts.
my sketchbooks. They're, they're, they're probably the more, most valuable thing that I have. My drawings tend to have more detail than my paintings. The drawing's not enough for me. I'll need to explore more on it. I'll need to, I'll need to complete the thought. And that's where the paintings come in. My newer work is more about the negative space than the positive space. With a lot of my negative space in my paintings, those are things that have been forgotten. Sort of a reminder of what was there. A small series I'm working on right now is The Old Interstate. It's gone by the wayside, they're, they're tearing it down. Once I knew that they were gonna tear down the interstate that runs through the city, I developed more of an appreciation for it. I saw the lines, the shadows, the curves, the off-ramps, the on-ramps, the, just the, the way that it was built opposed to the way the new highways are built. It became less and less about the subject matter and more and more about the style of the work and the process itself of the painting. I always question why I'm an artist. It's the process that, that makes me an artist. If I'm working in my studio and I'm actually painting, or if I'm out drawing, that's the closest I feel to being an artist. When I'm making the decisions of what gets remembered and what gets forgotten, they're all good decisions. Thank you.